So we are, it's on Thursday now, and we are um, number day four of our spirit week here at Hawking College. And our theme is going to be a little bit different than what Hawking College has decided because it's my filter and I can do it if I want to. So what we are actually going to be doing is instead of dress for success, we are going to prepare for success. I think it's more important to prepare um, for success. So that's how I decided I want to do this photo. Um, dressing appropriately is part of preparation, but uh, preparation happens prior to that with your education. Um, so that's going to be kind of what our focus is on, education and training and stuff. And so I'm going to, let's go ahead and get started. You can see that there's links um, for YouTube videos for the previous ones. Yesterday was a rough one. I didn't, I couldn't come up with a good idea. And then I kind of did a mishmash of all kinds of ideas and it was just a cluster. But that's how, you know, that's part of the process. Sometimes things work well and sometimes not so much. Okay. So let's kind of go ahead and go to Snapchat. And we are going to play with one of my favorite templates. This is segmentation. So let's go ahead and go in there and let's see, go to segmentation. It's going to load. Waiting. So you can fast forward through this if you're watching the the, the the video recording of it. There we go. Maybe close. Oh no. This is not clear. Oh, yes, it did. Okay, good. I think it's just still thinking right now. I hesitate to go forward because it doesn't look like it's wanting to cooperate right now. I'm afraid I might need to restart it. Uh, when I say restart it, I mean restart my computer. Okay. Let's start on troubleshooting. So we're going to go ahead and close to home. Let's just go ahead and try to open it again and see if this works. So far, it's not looked promising. So, uh, I don't care about the webcam stream. Let's look up. Okay. Okay, that's good. So, the webcam stream may be uh, an issue because of the fact that I'm using the webcam right now, which has been an issue in the past. But the preview, if I'm on like the model person, then it should be okay. And you can see this is something we haven't really gone over yet. But you can see down here on the bottom, there's the logger. And it kind of gives you some um, hint, hints on what's going on with it. Or as things are updated, it'll let you know the status of it. So it's a log. Um, yep. So it tells me I can't open the webcam stream. And that's when I noticed I was still on webcam instead of the person to thing. And so, okay. We're okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our assets and we it's in the Google folder that um, we've been using, you know, all this week. Um, it's the one labeled for Thursday 
And let's see, I'm going to go ahead. I know what they are. I didn't really label them, name them right, but I know what they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab them. The ones I uploaded in the Google Drive are labeled more appropriately out of that image. Let's see. Okay. So the first thing that I want us to do, let's kind of go over the segmentation. So what segmentation is, the field, the template is, you can see it looks like little hearts and it's got like a bit of a pink background and it's um, moving. Okay, it's moving tiles. And if you click, make sure you're clicked under segmentation control or edit me. And this is an indication that you can edit, you know, the components in here. So if you go under the inspector side, you can see the background color. We can choose to have it or not. Um, I'm going to actually choose not. And then the image texture, we're going to change from a heart. And I think I want to change this one. Yeah. So if you're not sure if you do like I do and don't name files appropriately, you can click on the file and just to make sure it's the right one. So let's go ahead and back into that and just drag it over. Okay, now you can see it's a bunch of tiles. Can't, it's not really legible, obviously, because it's just a bunch of tiles. Now the image blend mode, you can play with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave mine at normal. I'm going to turn off tiled. And just so you can see the difference. Um, it's, you can't really still can't really read it because it's so large. Um, you can play with the fill mode on that the fit. Okay. Um, if the webcam would work, you could move and then you could see the image in the background. I can't make the you know, static model move obviously, but if the webcam was working right now, you would be able to see, you can move and see that in the background. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to turn the tiles back on the tiled. So there's multiple tiles, but you can actually change the tile density. So I'm going to drag this down to one. Okay. And you can see it's just one tile, so to speak. Um, and then it's scrolling, which is fine. And scrolling is kind of fun to play with. Like you can, you know, really do some crazy stuff like that. You know, you can see that I'm, I'm moving the scroll speed for X, which is across, up and down. And um, it's just kind of fun to play with. Scroll speed Y does the same thing, except just for up and down. Okay. And you can also use this little arrow. Let's see, or you can do manual. Okay, so it's still moving. It's got some action. It's just a lot slower, so somebody can maybe read it. Okay, so that's all we're going to do with that. Now what we're going to do is add some screen images. So click on this plus symbol and screen image. Okay, so we got a screen image, you got um, a spot for an image to go. And we'll just go ahead and choose the next one that's in queue, which is image nine. I'll get back in screen image. And just drag image nine over. That's larger than what I want it to be. So if I click on advanced, um, it's going to give me some options to change the size. So the scaling is going to um, change the size. So this is going to change how wide it is, and this is going to change how tall it is. So I'm just making it, okay. So it's smaller, but it's not exactly in the position that I want. So what I can do is actually, um, well, I don't see the screen that I saw earlier, but that's okay. Let's see. Yep. Okay. I'm not seeing the screen. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. No. I saw a different screen earlier. I must I'm not sure how I did it, but oh well. Okay, well we can still move it. Um let's see. Offset. 
change that to top. Okay, it's moving it up. I want to kind of type it in here to make it go faster. Right, that's a little too high. Okay. Okay, so we're good on that. There was something else up here, and I don't know if it's... Oh, I just... Un control Z, Control Z. Control Z is not working. Yeah. Try this again. I think I played with one thing there too much. Okay. Leave it alone now. Don't know why I'm not seeing what I saw earlier, but that's okay. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to do some copy paste because I already got the stuff, you know, some of the parameters and the properties the way I want it. I don't want to have to keep doing it again and again and again. So what we're going to do is we're going to select screen image zero, right click, duplicate. No, that's not what we're going to do. Sorry. Full image range in zero, right click, duplicate. There we go. And we are going to just change the image. So I'm going to change this from image nine to image eight. And you can see it's on top of it because we haven't changed the placement of it. And I'm going to change that. Um, let's see. What I'm, what I'm doing right now is changing uh, the offsets, it looks like. Okay, so that brought that down, which is good. Now I want it to go to the right. Oh, you can also drag it here. Forgot about that. That's just a lot easier. Okay. So we're doing this again. We're going to right click, duplicate, screen image. We are going to replace this image. And we are just going to drag it, oopsie, down there. And do a couple more times. Right click, duplicate. Oopsie, didn't duplicate what I wanted to duplicate. Make sure I got that full frame, re full frame region selected. Duplicate. There we go. And change that image. And I'm just going to drag this over. Let's put this one in the middle. Actually, that's not the image I want. I want this one. This is why you should name your images properly. Okay, I want that one so you can see it better. And then I'm going to do one more time. Right click, duplicate. AWS TNC. There we go. And I'm just going to drag it. Okay. Drag it here, I suppose. This works. So, what I can do now if, oopsie, make sure I'm clicking on what I want to drag. Keep grabbing the wrong thing there. I'm just going to kind of put this in whatever spots that I want. If I could stop grabbing the wrong thing, that would be awesome. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. I will leave it at that. Okay, so as you can see right now, um, 
we got a lot of digital badges and a career day. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's training and certification. So the point of this is like to prepare for success. Um, if you follow me on social media at all, you know, I'm like mildly obsessed with AWS, everything AWS and, and not only the technology behind it, but the opportunities with it. So AWS Educate is a really great platform for high schools, um, students and teachers and college students and teachers. Basically you have to be over 14 and in school um, to learn about cloud computing technology. These digital badges are things that are available within AWS Educate. Um, Alexa is if you're 18 and over, um, just because of Alexa guidelines and rules or whatever. Um, so my high school students, the high school students I work with can do Alexa, but my college students can. Uh, Sumerian is AR, um, augmented reality, virtual rea reality um, technology within AWS. It's a lot of fun to play with. And then their startups, which is more of an entrepreneurial mindset, just to kind of get them thinking. Um, so those are digital badges, and there's more than that that are available within AWS Educate. Okay, these are going to help prepare you for um, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. These are going to help in expose you to some term term um, technology and some opportunities that you may not have known otherwise. These are going to prepare you for a career that of your dreams, so to speak. So Amazon Career Day. Amazon Career Day was actually last week. And luckily enough, they're still recording. The recordings of all the individual sessions are out there. So that's one way you can prepare because there's a lot, some of the keynote speakers were um, the CEOs of ZipRecruiter and The Muse and other people that I, I don't remember. Um, but these are really great opportunities to learn from Amazon, not necessarily just AWS, but all the facets of Amazon, how to prepare for a career with Amazon. And AWS training and certification is a great platform to just teach you all about every kind of different AWS service and technology that's out there. This is available for anybody who has an Amazon account, which is probably most, if not all of us. Um, this is available for anybody who has an Amazon account. This up here is available for students, high school or college 14 and over, or age 14 and over. Um, that's what this is for. This is, even if, if you're not a student, you still have access to some awesome um, training. Okay. And what's really cool about this, well, I think it's cool, um, is the fact that you can get um, certificates of completion and it tells you how long you how long it took. It's got your name and stuff like that on it. And what I do for some of my classes, I make the students upload that in their LinkedIn account just to help promote themselves and help make those contacts that could be a benefit when they graduate. OK, so that's that. Um, my ramble on about what those different things are. So let's actually play with some cool stuff in here. So right now at this moment, everything, when you open up the filter, everything will show. Okay. So let's try send lens to advice. And want to go ahead and go back on here so you can see me. I'm waiting for my thing to pop saying ready for preview waiting I'm gonna pause while I'm, I'm waiting on this okay so we're having some technical difficulties it's not pushing to for the preview you can see back in the log like we talked about earlier there's some stuff going on uh yeah, it's still going on internal server. Uh, sounds like it's a server issue, maybe. It's um, Lens Studio or Snapchat. So we're just going to go ahead and go on and hope for the best on this. Um, okay. Bring that down a little bit. I'll play with it a little bit more. But basically what would happen is like whenever we first open up this filter, all of that stuff would appear. But I want it more fun than that because I can't. So we're going to do some behavior scripts again. So it's pretty much everything we've done this, I think, every day this week. Go helper scripts, behavior. 
So behavior, so we got three, four, five different things that we want to appear. And I want each one to appear on a different behavior. Uh -huh. So right now, um, we leave this alone. Behavior is initialized. The trigger is a touch event. So one of our things is going to be a touch event. Actually, before I get into that, um, all of these, I'm going to go ahead and make it disappear right now. So you can see how it affects whenever we do do these um, behavior events. So to do that, I go under full frame region, zero, and uncheck that. Full frame region one, uncheck that. Full frame region two, uncheck that. Full frame region three, uncheck that. Full frame region four, and uncheck that. Okay, cool. And so now back to the behavior. Behavior. So right now, when somebody opens up this lens, that's all they see. They see that moving background of AWS Educate. Um, and basically, it's just talking about AWS Educate in the classroom and the stuff that it provides, which I kind of already explained earlier. So behavior, um, touch event, tap, always. Okay. So remember how I think it was yesterday in the pajama one where I got just, it was not good. I know it was not good. Um Every time I opened my mouth or I raised, raised my eyebrows, the thing kept coming and going and it was really annoying. So that's part of user experience. And I just don't, I don't want to do that on this one. I just want it to appear and then not go away. Just, just stay there. And that's one of the reasons why I sorted them out as much as I did. Okay. So the response type is set enabled. Okay, in the target, we are going to go to the orthographic camera. These full frame regions, the ones we just kind of unchecked so they disappear. We're going to check just the first one, just one at a time, full frame region zero, and it's going to enable. Okay, so when we tap it, it's going to be there. Okay, so um, what we can do now is right click duplicate it's going to duplicate it and we're going to do some uh, a face event so it's going to be once like it was before except we're going to change the 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 target okay so um, if I tap it, it'll show that one will show because I don't can't do the webcam enabled. You won't be able to see me open my mouth, but just trust the fact that if you're doing this, um, your mouth, once you open your mouth, um, the, the thing will appear, but that, whatever that image was. And now that I'm actually doing this in live, I think I might change this because of the fact you can't see what I'm doing. But basically what happens is that you can choose multiple events and just keep repeating what I'm doing, duplicate, choose whatever browse raise, and it'll show a different image, whatever you select it. But I think we'll do this a little bit differently just because of the fact that you can't, you can't see me do it and it's not pushing to the preview because it's just not, I don't know why. That's not what I wanted to do. Right click, delete. Okay, so I'm going to go back to behavior and click full frame region. We'll see if I can click multiple. I don't think so. No, I can't. No, I can't. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and go back to behavior two. Touch event, tap. Nope, we're going to change that back to touch event. Tap once, set enabled, and one is correct. We're going to leave that alone. So what happens if I hit tap now? Let the lens reset. Maybe it doesn't need to. Okay, two things appear. Good. So we're doing good. Um, see, there's there's not really a whole lot that I can do here that will... You can see here without being the webcam. So this is just on there because whenever 
the lens is updated, which is pretty much every time it comes on. Um, yeah, then we're just going to stick with the touch events because that's the only thing I can really show here. So I tap it, I tap it, and those both of those appear. Um, let's see, right click, duplicate. And let's see, this was, oh, wait a minute, give me, okay. So full frame region one, we're gonna actually change that to full frame region two. And you should see three, yep. So we got those three digital badges. Duplicate. We're changing this to three. Tap it. Yep. And duplicate. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's just change this because we can only just, we're only using tap. Let's just go ahead and change that to toggle. Oh, okay, change this to always. Let the lens reset. There we go. Toggle. There should be. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so the only one's toggling is that one. Okay, so we need to do fix that here. Toggle. Behavior three. Toggle. Always. I think I may have skipped one. Toggle. There we go. It's behavior four. Oh, looks right. Behavior two. That looks right. Behavior. Okay. Wait for the lens to update. Oh, missed one. That's there. Okay. So what happens every time I click on a different behavior, there's a slight delay on the inspector changing and updating to which one I'm on. And again, if I did proper naming, it wouldn't have been as much of an issue, but you know what I mean? Okay. So it works. Bum, bum, that's kind of fun. Okay. So again, I can't do send lens to device. So let's just go ahead and, and finish this up. Um, let's want to name it prep for, let's do this because I have limited space success. Um, the tap, the, the hint is tap and uh, we're going to change that in here to, um, let's change it to I don't have a good one already set aside. Let's just do the T and C, which is training and certificate certification. Nah, I don't like that one. We'll change it. This is when naming would have helped. There's a, some, I know what I'm looking for, just don't see it yet. There we go. That didn't work. Let's try another one. Let's do this one. Okay, that's just going to have to do um apply okay publish lens
Waiting. Hopefully this works. Okay. And I have a business account. Um, so you probably don't see this because I can choose between business and community. You probably will just go straight to the community. Okay. So we're going to click edit. Edit. It's thinking. Okay, so prep for success. AWS. Um, te teaching. I don't know. Okay, right, that's good enough. You need to find a person. Okay, hit submit. Okay, and I want to pause this while it reviews and want to see how it works um, once it's actually published. Let you see what the email looks like. And I want to pause this. Okay, it's taking longer than usual. And as we saw earlier, there might be something going wrong with their server on their end. So we're just going to go ahead and call this the video. And, um, and if you have any questions on how to access it or what to do when you receive that email, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, click on the link or share the QR code that it's generated. It's, um, based off the little icon, you submit it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And this was one of the my this template that we use. The segmentation was one of my um, favorite ones because there's a um, it's just fun to play with the background and the tiles and the moving and all that stuff. So let me know if you have any questions. 